I could go on, but I will cede the floor. I yield the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Shanahan. And uh, now on to Mr. Angus. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a very uh, disturbing situation we're in. It's been one week since the Ethics Committee met to get reformed after Prime Minister Trudeau prorogued and shut down our investigation. We had a number of motions to get to in order to get on with business because we have an obligation to the Canadian people to finish the work that was begun on the Wee Scandal. And part of that was a simple motion to follow through on the documents that our committee agreed to ask for last July. So there should have been a very straightforward process of uh, reintroducing the motion, then having the, the documents presented, and we could move on to many of the other things that all of us would like to talk about. Uh, Ms. Shanahan wants to talk about a COVID app. Well, I don't think it's uh, actually under our purview, it's probably health, but uh, rather than waste our time in an endless filibuster, she could just agree to turn the documents over and they could bring forward a motion. That's how parliament is supposed to work. And we have an obligation to Canadians to get answers. I find this situation very frustrating because Last week, we attempted to work with the Liberals on the documents. The documents that it agreed to in July, we agreed to put very specific provisions to protect the privacy of individuals because the privacy of individuals is an important principle. We're not here to do naming and shaming. We're here to verify facts. And yet when we responded to the Liberals' demand for all manner of protections in this new motion, and we offered that, then the Liberals changed and wanted to fight about something else. Uh, the reality is we are going to get those documents because they're pertinent. So why are they pertinent? Well, because one of the unfortunate things that we've seen in the WE scandal is that we have been told time and time again conflicting, very conflicting stories about the Trudeau family's very close financial relationship with the Kielberger Group. And why does this matter? Well, the Liberals are trying to tell us that family does not include uh, mother and brother, uh, that somehow family is something, I don't know what kind of family that they uh, envision, but in the Conflict of Interest Act, persons who are related to a public office holder by birth, marriage, common law partnership, adoption or affinity are the public office holders relatives for the purpose of the act. The reason the issue of family is included in the Conflict of Interest Act is to ensure that family, whether knowingly or unknowingly, cannot be used as a conduit to exert influence on a public office holder. And when that public office holder is the prime minister of the nation, and when we're talking about a decision by key liberal ministers to support what would have ended up being a $900 million plan to transfer money to this organization that's close financial ties, that requires uh, a good deal of scrutiny and it re relies on answers being given very clearly. I would also suggest that uh, under Section 5 of the Conflict of Interest Act, which I know is Ms. Shanahan, she only, she, all the relevant parts, she, she seemed to be uh, missing. Section 5 is key because it says every pa public office holder shall arrange his or her private affairs in a manner that will prevent the public office holder from being in a conflict of interest. So when she's talking about the private affairs of the family and how it's none of our business, well, it actually is our business because under the Conflict of Interest Act, it is the obligation of the public office holder to protect themselves from being found in a conflict of interest. That's not something that's, you know, it's kind of academic. This is what the prime minister of our nation was found guilty of in the very first findings by the ethics commissioner under the Trudeau report one, that he breached uh, section five. And it wasn't over illegal lobbying by the Aga Khan. 
Uh, it wasn't about him agreeing to take a trip and then setting up meetings. It was about the connection between his family and his family's decision to go to the island that put the prime minister in a conflict of interest. So these documents should simply verify the latest story, the latest claim we have had from government and from the Kielberger group about the payments that were made to the Trudeau family. We know that in the beginning, uh, when questions were raised, the prime minister said he's never received any money from we. But we do know that the prime minister, after uh, becoming the youth critic for the Liberal Party, carried on quite an extensive side business while being a parliamentarian doing public speaking. Uh, was he paid by we? He said he never was. Well, those documents will simply verify that. If they verify that, we move on. But what if they don't? What if the prime minister was paid? That's a legitimate question and a very serious question. I can't for the life of me understand why the liberals would be filibustering and trying to block access to documents if those documents uh, conform to the liberal line, which is the prime minister never received payments from the, from the WE group. Fine, show us the documents. In terms of his family, what struck us from the beginning was that we were told that Margaret Trudeau and Sasha Trudeau received no payment because they were volunteers. But we learned that that wasn't true and that upwards or over half a million dollars was transferred uh, for their work. While we also learned the WE Charity Board was told explicitly that the Trudeau family was not being paid. So what kind of uh, deal is going down that a charity board asks a specific question whether the prime minister's close personal family are being paid and are being told don't worry they're not being paid when payments were made this isn't to suggest that mrs trudeau or sasha did anything wrong that's not the issue here the issue is by creating this relationship uh, that the keelbergers developed with the prime minister it put the prime minister in a very clear prima facie conflict of interest, that he needed to make sure that these payments, uh, they were affecting him because at the end of the day, uh, he was the one who signed off on this deal with WE. And we know from the documents that we received that the WE group were using photos of his family to key ministries and key ministers who were going to sign off on this $900 million deal. That is an obvious conflict of interest, and yet in the 5,000 pages of documents, no one from the prime minister's office raised a red flag and said, hey, you cannot use my family to promote your ability to get this $900 million contract. That cannot be done. Nobody said that. So if the $500,000 in payments to the Trudeau family were, as the WE group finally admitted, uh, then the documents will simply verify that. What I find really surprising when we pushed the Kielbergers at, at finance about how these payments were made and why the Trudeau family were being paid and not other illustrious public speakers who were doing it for free was that they said that these payments were made not for public speaking. Margaret Trudeau was not paid by we because of her extraordinary and I think very exceptional public presence as a mental health spokesperson. They didn't pay her for that. They paid her to work the after events. And those after events were the major corporate sponsorship events. So they were paying the prime minister's family to do work for them. That's an issue of conflict of interest. Those documents will either verify what those payments are or show us that there were other payments or other services rendered. We need to know that. If everything's as straight up as the liberals say, they don't need to have us go all night. They don't need to. Uh, De derail our work at committee. They need to say, we will set a process up. We're all professionals here. We understand how these documents have to be treated. We will look at those documents and if they verify what the Liberal government says and what Mr. Trudeau says about his financial relations with the Kielberger group, then we can move on. But if those documents contradict it, well, then I think this scandal moves into a whole different turf. And I'm only raising that because I cannot understand this obstruction of a motion that had already passed committee in July that we had support for, but yet was the only thing that stopped us from getting that, those reports 
was the prorogation, the forced shutdown of Parliament by the Prime Minister when we began to get close to getting answers. I have said uh, at the last meeting, and I will repeat it again, we are trying to work with the other parties to move to a new committee that we can actually get all the issues from, uh, from finance, from government operations, from official languages to deal with this and deal with it and I'll issue the larger issues of the pandemic spending. Uh, issues of, for example, David McNaughton, a close insider friend of the prime minister who got all access pass right up to the deputy prime minister and General Vance chief of staff uh, while promoting, I think, a very dubious company. He got it because he's an inside liberal. We need to look at the issue of Mr. Rob Silver and the fact that I've had many, many, many calls from businesses in my region who were barely hanging on because the rent subsidy program was such a debacle and yet a company that was tied closely to the prime minister's inner circle uh, was given the mandate. Was that done right? Or were the friends involved? We need answers. Canadians deserve answers because we are in the biggest medical and economic catastrophe in a century. We need to be able to show them that parliament is focused on making sure that we're getting help, that we're getting help out the door in a timely manner, and the money is going to people who need it. Because I think at the end of the day, the biggest scandal in this deal to help the Kielberger group was that the prime minister made a promise to university students who were suffering massive levels of student debt, massive levels of insecurity, that there would be a billion dollars to help them and not a dime of that money rolled out the door. As soon as the Kielberger group couldn't get the money, the prime minister walked away on the university students of Canada. He left them high and dry. That is the fundamental scandal. So we need to report to Parliament. We need to get this report done. Uh, and so I'm saying, if it takes all night, if it takes all week, we will be here until the Liberals stop obstructing, stop interfering with, with work of Parliament, allow us to do our jobs as parliamentarians so we can get on with dealing with the many, many other issues that are facing Canadians as our COVID numbers are spiking again, there's more economic insecurity. We see cities like Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto uh, being hit with possible more lockdown measures. We really need to get focused here. But to do that, we need to clear up the stench of corruption that's raised around this scandal. We need to get answers. And we need to be able to say to the Canadian people, your parliamentarians went to get you answers, and we got answers. And this is what the answers tell us. Whatever those answers are, good or bad, we have an obligation to get this, and that is why I'm calling on the Liberals to stop the obstruction, stop the interference, stop the game playing. You have an obligation to Parliament, just as we have. Let's get this job done. This is the role of our committee. We will continue to push until we get these documents. I will now cede the floor, Mr. Chair. Chair, point of Thank order. You. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Angus. Uh, Madam Shannon, point of order? Uh, yes, uh, and I'd just like to clarify the uh, speaking list. And is it possible that it's actually in the order that we see it on our participants list? The raised hands, or um, perhaps uh, you, you still need to, uh, to tell us from time to time what the speaking order is? You read my mind, Madam Shannon. Mm -hmm. I was just about to do that. Uh, what I have in front of me right now is Mr. Barrett, Mr. Workington, Mr. Dong. Madam Goudreau, Ms. Latanzio, Mr. Sarbera, and Mr. Fergus. And now I'll move on to Mr. Barrett. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, it's incredibly frustrating that we find ourselves in the third day of a Liberal filibuster uh, to stop the release of documents that deal with the corruption scandal involving Justin Trudeau. And there's been a there's been a theme since 2015, and it's not openness by default. It's that every time Justin Trudeau needs to needs to cover up his actions, he makes liberal members pay the price. We saw that with all night voting to block Daniel Jean from testifying. We saw that with all night uh, voting 
when the liberals didn't want Jody Wilson-Raybould to be able to talk about the SNC-Lavalin scandal. And now we're back, and we see the liberals filibustering to stop Canadians from getting answers in the prime minister's latest scandal. He's under investigation for a third time, twice having been found guilty of breaking ethics laws. But here we are debating a motion that was approved by this committee. The, the, the committee receiving these documents was voted on, was debated and voted on, and we were to receive the documents, but the prime minister shut down parliament. And on that same day, he released illegally redacted documents and then blamed the parliamentary law clerk for having redacted them, which we now know was not true. And at the time, the prime minister said, well, we're, we're proroguing, but there'll be lots of time for questions, lots of time for questions. Well, it seems that that was as disingenuous as uh, a lot of things that we hear from the prime minister. And now across multiple committees, at, at, we had a shutdown of a committee at PROC. We had uh, the committee shut down uh, at finance, where it was suspended for a week and is being filibustered uh, concurrently with this committee. We have, uh, we have at, uh, at immigration committee, the meeting was, was adjourned with a motion dealing with COVID, I might add. A motion dealing with COVID, uh, they adjourned the meeting. The same thing happened at health. And so we heard from the prime minister this week, he got very upset that the opposition would dare to uh, exercise their constitutional obligation to hold the government to account. And, and that we need to talk about COVID. The only people stopping parliamentarians from talking about COVID are the liberals. That's it. This could have been resolved in 10 minutes at the first meeting, and this is true of multiple meetings, but the, that, they're, that they filibustered the health committee, I think is the supreme irony. It's the biggest tell that the liberals have no interest in accountability. They have no interest in actually doing for Canadians what they claim they want to do, because if they did, the hours that were pouring into these filibusters could be devoted to all kinds of other things. And this is a choice. This is a choice made by them. Reading newspapers into the record, reading PCO memos into the record, uh, you know, reading the committee mandate, asking for the committee mandate, meeting after meeting, that's not getting results for Canadians. That's, that's being complicit in a cover-up into corruption in Justin Trudeau's government, around his cabinet table. And, you know, I've heard from members of the committee that, you know, this isn't Main Street, this is Ottawa bubble, this isn't what, you know, people want us to focus on. Well, I can tell you, folks of any political stripe don't like corruption and they don't like cover-ups, and that's what this is. And yes, the ethics commissioner is investigating the prime minister for breaking the law for a third time, but we have the ability, we have the power to order these documents. We have the ability, this motion is in order. It is consistent with the mandate of this committee. The individuals involved who are named in the motion are relevant to the matter at hand. And to, to, uh, to try and skate around this and say that uh, somehow, you know, um, this is, this is uh, some kind of a, uh, some kind of a, a game that uh, is, is, just, is just meant to delay getting results for Canadians. We've, we've shown as, as members, we've shown as, as the official opposition and all opposition parties that when the rubber hits the road, we're there. We're there to, Im to improve the programs that the government uh, proposes and to pass them uh, into law quickly when it is necessary to do so. But that's just a shield to try and protect against the scrutiny 
the rightful scrutiny, the lawful scrutiny of, uh, of what's going on with this government. And when you talk about the, the pandemic and you talk about, about measures to help Canadians, that's how this happened. That's how we got here. When given the opportunity to help students, when given the, when given the ability by parliamentarians, by parliament, to, to create these programs and, and to, to help students, what did the government do? They found a liberal, uh, they found friends of the Liberal Party. They found insiders to, to try and shovel some cash out the door to. That's why we're here. This is, this is specifically about COVID. Because instead of doing the right thing, the liberals did what they always do. Just like they did in ad scam, we saw it, we saw it before under the guise of an altruistic purpose, helping out insiders and, and cash to their friends. So um, while I'm sure we are going to be here for a very long time, that choice is one that's being made exclusively by the Liberals. And for my part, I'm being consistent with exactly what we said we were going to do when the Prime Minister shut down Parliament, and that's get these answers for Canadians. And uh, it's, it's surprising to me that um, Liberals take such a, take, are taking in such great stride across many committees uh, the uh, the coordinated cover up efforts, and I'm certain that I'm going to hear. Uh, I'm certain I'm going to hear. You know that um, I'm I'm being partisan, and that uh, the liberal members on the committee would never uh, do such a thing. And this is this is about what's doing what's right. Um, I, I've got to say, if the shoe was on the other foot, I can guarantee you that uh, liberal members would be looking for accountability on this. And I guarantee you that if in, uh, if uh, across the border, there were members of the president's family who received half a million dollars in payments, and then uh, the company that paid them was, was asked to administer an agreement worth half a billion dollars, that we would, we would hear a lot of commentary and, and uh, people would be uh, those, those same members would be saying, well, you know, uh, you know, we're we're certainly, you know, not like we're not like that. We're we have the moral superiority. Never, never would that happen here, but it is happening here, and it's happening inside the Liberal cabinet room, and now it's spreading into the Liberal caucus room and into the committee rooms, and there's the power to stop it is the people that are sitting uh, on this call right now. So I I will. Uh, I will um, cede the, the floor, Mr. Chair, and um, we'll let all of the uh, members of the committee um, make their contributions. And then I'm sure we'll hear uh, supplementary contributions and, uh, and then tertiary contributions. But um, we're here to get results for Canadians. Once, we're, once this matter is disposed of, then we can move on to, to other business. Um, but the uh, the uh, circular path that is being um, is being traveled is um, a decision that has been made. The decision to travel that path is is one that's been made uh, by the Liberal members and um, like uh, like many many people, I I'm here in search of uh, of answers and accountability. And the reason we find ourselves here, the reason we find ourselves here is. Um, because of one person, and that person has been found guilty of breaking ethics laws twice, and they're under investigation for a third time, and uh, that person is uh, is Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and and like he had members vote for hours and hours and days and days to stop accountability in the past, it seems that history is repeating itself again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, now on to Mr. Workington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I think some history is important here because it's important for Canadians to to understand that this this motion was passed. A, a, a decision by this committee was made uh, to request these documents, and and there had been considerable amount of of discussion at that point. There was considerable amount of filibustering from the Liberals to try to delay the the release of those documents, and in the end, the Ethics Committee uh, voted to have these documents um, brought to committee. It was just hours before those documents would have been available to committee members that the Prime Minister shut down Parliament, shutting down all investigations into the Prime Minister uh, with regards to these these documents and this scandal. The national media is now reporting that Liberal members, uh, Liberal MPs are afraid of what these documents will show. Uh, they have been quoted as saying that they are afraid of what's included in in these documents. As a matter of fact, you know, I think it's telling that we have members, and I would say, uh, you know, respected members of the Liberal Party that are members of this committee that would rather humiliate themselves than allow these documents to see the light of day. I think that says something about the severity of the contents of these documents. I, I don't believe if these documents were going to exonerate the Prime Minister, I don't think that there would be a single member of the Liberal Party that would be fighting to see that these documents uh, would continue to be uh, under, uh, uh, would be, uh, sh that we would not have the access to these documents. I, I believe that if these documents uh, were going to exonerate the Prime Minister, the, the Prime Minister would work uh, day and night to ensure that these, that, these, that these documents were released to committee members. And I do not believe that any member of the, the, the Liberal Party that are members of this committee would humiliate themselves the way that they are in going on for hours and hours reading uh, documents into the record of of which um, we have all we all have access to those documents. This is simply a, a, a decision by those members to humiliate themselves rather than to see these documents see the light of day. The Prime Minister Justin Trudeau used to say that sunlight was the best disinfectant. Well, Mr. Mr. Chair, I believe that the spreading infection of liberal corruption desperately needs the disinfectant of sunlight right now. I do strongly believe that it's time for um, this committee uh, to get access to these documents in the way that uh, that this committee has has voted in the past to, to have these documents brought forward. I believe now more than ever, uh, we, we need to see these documents so that we could put this matter to rest. If in fact there is nothing to be seen in the documents, then Canadians will never see the contents of these uh, documents because regardless as to what happens, these documents will be held at the clerk's office. They will not be readily available to Canadians. They will simply uh, be accessed by members of this committee to ensure that uh, we can verify uh, the, the evidence. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I believe that the demonstration of how desperately uh, the Liberals find uh, how desperately they are, how desperate they are to um, to ensure that these documents do not come to committee demonstrates just how damning the evidence within them must be. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair.